This is Boston, Massachusetts. It looks like any other American city, doesn't it? With skyscrapers, an airport, and even a body of water surrounding it, Boston has plenty. But let's compare it to cities like Detroit, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Chicago, and St. Louis. Each of these cities also have skyscrapers, airports, and bodies of water surrounding them. But each one of these cities also has one more thing. Massive freight rail yards. Let's look again. Detroit, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Chicago, and St. Louis. But Boston? Boston has none. And like all things on this earth, Boston's lack of freight rail has a story behind it that I'm here to uncover. So, let's see what remains of Boston's once robust freight rail industry. In the first episode of this multi-part series, we will be using maps to look at the change Boston has seen when it comes to freight rail. These maps are all made possible by Atlas Scope, which is a really neat program made by the Boston Public Library that shows before and after snapshots of Boston maps. So now that you know what this is all about, let's get this video started. In the early 1900s, Boston looked like this. Notice, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven major rail yards. However, look at all of these spots in 2023 and watch. In every single location where there was once a massive rail yard, there is now zero sign of what once stood there. So where did this robust freight rail industry that many other cities still have go? The disappearance of freight was caused by a combination of many factors, the first of which being the consolidation of railroads. Every city typically had dozens of railroads, all with names that had to do with the areas they served, and each with their own stations, tracks, or yards. For example, on the MBTA today, the Newburyport-Rockport line was once the lines of the Eastern Railroad, and the Lowell line was once a branch of the Boston and Lowell Railroad. But now, in 2023, both the Lowell line and the Newburyport-Rockport line are operated under one railroad, the MBTA. Every one of these separate railroads had their own stations in downtown Boston, too, just as each one of the railroads typically had their own freight yards. However, as larger companies began merging with smaller ones, systems soon became less and less diverse. So all of a sudden, in Boston, all you had was North and South Station. And because these passenger railroads doubled as freight railroads, much of the varied freight yards in Boston would be funneled into one larger yard. And in fact, that's how it worked for most cities in America. But let's dig deeper into the history of Boston's freight just a bit more. Note that I am only diving in to a few specific Boston areas. Starting with the Seaport District, an area which once had tons of freight rail industry. Up until the mid to late 1900s, the Seaport District was dominated by freight rail. Given its size, there were many separate and large freight yards serving a variety of industries from the South Boston Naval Annex to the South Boston Power Plant and the Conley Intermodal Terminal. However, as the years went on and the railroads that ran these tracks shifted, industries such as the South Boston Naval Annex were closed. And ultimately, truck transport became more favorable to rail. However, the knockout punch that was dealt to the seaport's rail industry was in 1997, when the Surface Transportation Board permitted CSX to abandon the line past Summer Street for three years in order to make way for the Big Dig construction. Unfortunately, this abandonment was extended multiple years, and today, the area sees zero freight rail traffic. Though there has been recent attempts to revive the trackage, each attempt has fallen through. 
and with new buildings already standing in the old rail yards, it is doubtful that freight rail will ever return. That doesn't mean the track won't be used at all, though. Recently, the MBTA has been using a portion of Track 61, a rail terminal track that once connected the seaport yards to the main line, as a test track for their new redline cars. I'd say that's a pretty good use of an ill-used track. Next up, the two north side freight yards I'd like to talk about were operated most recently by Guilford Transportation, and primarily by the Boston and Maine. These yards directly served many industries in Boston, from Cambridge to Everett to Somerville. The reason for their disappearance is mostly tied to lack of demand. These yards on the north side were abandoned because they were simply no longer needed, and all the industries surrounding them were closing. The first of these two yards was located in the current day neighborhood known as Cambridge Crossing. Just north of this area is the MBTA's Boston Engine Terminal. The second yard was located just south of the MBTA's Alewife Station in West Cambridge. Obviously, both yards are now gone, with barely any traces of what once was. However, one rail yard managed to maintain consistent freight service from its opening in 1890 to its closing in 2013. Operated by CSX in the 2000s, Beacon Park Yard was located in Alston, Massachusetts, and took transflow, intermodal, waste, and other traffic. But everything changed in 2009 when the Massachusetts Department of Transportation reached an agreement with CSX and Harvard University over Beacon Park Yard. In the deal, CSX would leave Boston, while meanwhile the state funded the construction of the new Worcester Intermodal Terminal and the Westboro Transflow Facility. These two yards would take in almost all traffic that Beacon Park Yard once had. The future of this yard is like all the others. New developments and neighborhoods are on the way to go where this yard once stood. So, now in 2023, there are zero major yards in Boston. Yes, there are many major yards that serve the people of Boston, such as Ayer Yard or Worcester Yard. However, none of them are located within the city. Today, only local trains serve Boston, locals being small freight trains that directly serve industries scattered around the city. Only a few active freight yards, if you can even call them that, remain in Boston today. So, to end the episode, let's check out the first and biggest, Reedville Yard. Reedville Yard is a small yard which stores cars that serve Abex Industries adjacent to the yard and Coheno in Stoughton. Trains only operate out of here on weekdays, which include LO10, the Reedville to Framingham job which brings the cars to the yard, and L001, the Reedville Yard switcher. These operations are quite interesting too. Let's check out LO10. On this cloudy March day, LO10 is right on time for its arrival into Reedville. With a GP40-2 leading and an SD40-2 trailing, this train is making its final approach into Reedville Yard. This train is almost 100% boxcars, just like old railroading. At the mouth of the yard, LO10 must pause before backing into the yard to drop their cars.
While they're stopped, let's check out that second locomotive on the consist. This SD40-2 lived most of its life on Conrail, and now can be seen on trains all around the United States. Now that the switch is set, LO10 can back into Reedville Yard. As LO10 fades into the distance, we must remember how special this train is. After all, it is one of only a few freight trains that remain in Metro Boston. And if you're interested to learn about another Metro Boston freight train, be on the lookout for my next video in the series, covering the recently abolished CSX B01 Salem job. But until then, I will see you all again soon out there on the rails.